Hey everyone, this is Christine from Left Side Art. I have a new art journal layout for you today. This is part of my art journal for beginner series. And what I do is create a layout once a month and I try to post it at least the first of every month because what I do is I image the month and year on top of the background and I put it on my website so you could download it um, and use it for a background on your computer, um, tablet, or phone. And if you don't want the month and image, uh, month and year imaged on top of it, I have an art pal link where you can purchase the image. In any case, I am using my large dilutions journal. And right now I am playing around with the scribble sticks from Dino Wakely. I did not gesso or put gel medium on this page. I wanted to see how the scribble sticks would react on the paper. And as you can see, they spread a little bit, but not as much as I wanted. So I did take some clear gel medium and apply it to both pages. I do make sure I go down that seam where the book closes, so whatever liquids I use do not leak through the pages onto my other layouts as much as possible. I try to prevent it. I also glue two pages together. Um, just because I do use heavier, heavier embellishments on my layouts. Um, the pages are nice and thick for general mixed media, but uh, not quite thick enough to hold up to the amount of heavy embellishments that I use. I also took out some pages out of this book. My um, book here was getting very thick very quickly and I was starting to break the spine. So I removed some signatures throughout the rest of the book here and I'll just use it you know, to make a smaller journal and whatnot. In any case, um, the first step in making our layout is to create a background. And what I'm doing is I'm just applying some different colors kind of randomly. Um, and I did try to make the border a little bit darker like I usually do with a gray, but my intent will be to cover this up with white. And so I just want some of these colors to shine through a little bit. I did this accidentally on my previous layout where I just absolutely did not like the background that I was making and I covered up with other colors, but I really ended up liking the way it looked because a little bit of those colors shine through. So now I'm trying to do this purposely and hopefully it'll work out. And the scribble sticks weren't getting as dark as I wanted, so I got some of my Dino Weekly paints. I believe this is night. And I just moved it around with a damp paintbrush and a baby wipe just to get a little bit of that border going. And I'm just adding some random colors, blue, green, a little bit of yellow here and there um, with the scribble sticks and just moving around with a baby wipe. And I just continue messing with the background a little bit, adding some splatter. Uh, with that night and then I add a little bit of a gray color to tone down the bright yellow a little bit. And I tried adding a little bit of an orange color and it's um, I believe it's called Cheddar from Dina Wakely. Um, I am not liking this very much which was okay because I was going to cover it in white anyway it was not really going to show through. Um, I lost a little bit of video when I did cover it with white but all this was was white gesso. And I just added um, a couple of very thin layers. And now I'm taking my big pit brush pen. Um, this is India ink that you can move around just a little bit while it's still wet. I'm moving it around with baby wipe to create um, a little bit of a darker border. It might not show up very clearly here on the video, but a lot of the colors that I had applied um, first do show through and it gives it just enough interest because if I would have added white gesso just to that plain manila um, regular paper color that we started with, it wouldn't have been as interesting. But I wanted this like a little bit of a foggy color kind of going on here and I think I accomplished what I was going for. And with that brown pit marker, I really was just adding a little bit more of that foggy look to it. And then I scribbled it on a script stamp um, and just kind of add a, a little bit more interest to that background.
Now the second step is to choose a focal object. My focal um, object will kind of spread from one page to the next. I don't focus necessarily on one single object, but rather a layout going throughout my page here. And these are really big pieces um, of cutout that I found on Amazon by a company called Abdul. I probably am mispronouncing that. I had the box at the very beginning of the video. It's this nice, really pretty blue box. These pieces came in. Um, and there's quite a few other pieces I didn't use in this layout uh, that came in that box that had uh, like glittery type of pieces that you know, had like lots of flowers to it and it was like a, a lot more girly for this layout than what I wanted but these are really nice like antique looking type of pieces and a couple of them did have some a little bit of color to it which I played off in the layout like this Eiffel Tower it has uh, a little bit of flowers on it and the plane there has a little bit of that same orange on its nose. I'm just using gel medium to adhere these down I didn't really have too much trouble with the gel medium getting these to stick. I probably use, should have used Eileen's Tacky Glue for some of these, um, especially when they start to layer on top of each other. But I just went back and kept applying some of the gel medium where pieces were lifting up. Now what was nice about these pieces is that I didn't cover them with gel medium like I normally would any paper pieces so that I could add their product on top of it. It came with a kind of like a glossy finish that when I applied like the big pit brush markers to and things like that, it just spread very easily. It didn't soak in whatsoever. I took a little bit of a color called Sedona from Dina Wakely and splattered it throughout my piece. This is a little bit of an orangey reddish color. I watered it down just a little bit and I was really just playing off the orange and pinkish tones that were already throughout these um, paper cutouts. And I took a paintbrush and it just enhanced those colors a bit and spread it throughout some of the rest of the pieces of um, paper. and. Like I said before, like this is so glossy that the colors just spread on it very easily and I don't have any trouble. Otherwise, the trick would have been to cover all of these with that same gel medium, which would have given you that layer of protection so that your media will glide on top of these pieces um, just as easily as it's doing now. To give this some shadow, I am taking one of my big pit brush markers. This is kind of like a, a grayish brownish color. It's pretty light. I just wanted to enhance some of the shadows here and there. I also wanted to tone down some of that color I had applied. I thought maybe I got a little too carried away with it in some places. I'm just using a baby wipe to help move it around. You could also use um, a slightly damped, dampened um, paintbrush as well especially in some of the smaller areas. I'm just going around everything. Again, just give it a little bit of a shadow, kind of tying it into the background.
So I took a black archival pen um, and just outlined each of these pieces. I normally don't do this as much as I'm doing here. Um, I usually just take a pit brush pen and give uh, objects some shadow. But in this case, because my focal object is so busy, I thought outlining it just kind of made each piece pop. And once this ink dries, it is permanent and won't move. So if I do add a little bit of water to it for other applications, I don't have to worry about it smudging. This pit brush pen I'm using here is black, but it's very worn out. So it just gives it kind of like a dark gray shadow here and there. So if you are using a new one, be aware it will be much bolder than what mine just came out as. And the last step is create your message. I just used some off-brand washi tape with similar colors to that nice orangey color that was throughout my layout. And then one of these chipboard pieces from Tim Holtz. I didn't have to glue the washi tape down. Sometimes it will peel up, so you know, just use a little bit of gel medium. And then I use Eileen's tacky glue for that heavier chipboard piece just to make sure it would stick. And I'm just gonna finish out my layout by applying a little bit more color here and there. I'm using Dress Crayons by Tim Holtz here where I am smudging the crayon with my finger a little bit. But that this basically completes my layout for this month. If you want to download this for your use with a month and a year imaged over top of it, there's a link below to my webpage where you could download this for free. I hope you've enjoyed this and I will catch you next time. Thanks.